Hey everyone. Uh. Hey everyone. What's on the menu today? On the menu today we have creative automation. So what's that? Well, you basically take a simple sound, like a simple 909 kick, and uh, turn it into something completely different. Let's see, let's see. So in order to create uh, a steady signal, uh, I sequenced the kick drum in uh, sixteenths. So without anything on it, without any plugins or automation, you have this. Oh, wait, just a kick. Right, so nothing special, very mundane. Quite unusable, I would say. So, what do we have here? Well, basically, I wanted to share this kind of uh, workflow where you take uh, certain parameters in your plugins of choice and then you get creative with them. So as you can see, quite a lot of automation going on, okay? And it's just for the sound. You just listened, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each plugin in order and then uh, switch on the automation that's uh, affecting each plugin. So the first one is distortion. And the knobs automated are boost, mix and feedback. Let's see without the automation. Right, so it does something even though everything is at zero and uh, the mix is halfway up. But then, with some automation, you get this. Right. For the majority of uh, every uh, automation uh, decision made, uh, yeah, for the majority, I chose to go with step sequencing. So every eighth, something happens. Every eighth note, something changes and then abruptly changes into something else. So uh, for some, I chose to go with a ramp. I'll, I'll explain those later, but uh, for the majority of the sounds, the way it changes, uh, I wanted to go with uh, a step fill uh, with abrupt changes. So the automation, let's see the knobs moving. Now, there is no reason to explain why each decision made. It was all experiments. But the point is, is that with any decision you make, you get totally different sequences and uh, totally different sounds each time. For this particular case, this is the set I liked the most. So for example, this automation lane is feedback and it acts as an on off switch every end of each bar well it's one bar essentially and uh, every half bar at the end of it you get uh, how much you get a hundred percent i think let's see Yeah, like eight, almost 10. Uh, so it acts as, uh, as an on-off switch. The 
boost evolves throughout with no particular uh, step necessarily made that way. It's just experiments. And uh, the mix also kind of like an on-off switch where you can have... Um, so so you, you can have 50-50 here, and then 100, 50, and then zero, close to zero. And then zero for the majority of the time. I'm not here to explain why I'm here to show, and hopefully you can try as well, what automation can do. So that's what distortion does on its own with automation. Right. So next up, we have soft clipper, um, where the difference with this one is, and you'll hear momentarily, The only, aha, uh -huh. you see, it's, uh, it's kind of a same thing again with uh, the feedback. It's something like a, like an on-off switch, uh, sometimes uh, less, but uh, for the amount here and here, you get that uh, snappy kick, if you can hear it. So here and here you get snappy kick, then it's reverb. On this one the parameters moved, <laughs> it's mix, uh, release, envelope release and diffusion, dog, somewhere. Moving to reverb. This one, this one, this one. Those three are the automation lanes for the reverb. And let's see the difference it makes. Don't worry about that. Again, the mix, uh, it's uh, brought in uh, in an uh, on-off switch kind of manner uh, in the beginning here and partially in the second half of the bar. See that? Right. Now, again, no particular reason why the automation changes are the way they are. It was after trial and error, 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 cannot say that word, trial and error, error, <laughs> trial and error, error, nothing more than that. And that's what you could try as well. Uh, there is no right or wrong. Yeah. After that, the most important one in the chain, let's see what it does. Let's hear what it does. <laughs> right, so I ended up with uh, like a kind of a melody going on. Uh, but uh, something that uh, is kind of impossible to explain is uh, the way you can achieve each note. Um, again, it was all tweaking and listening and tweaking and listening. Um, the parameters moved are... It's again mix, we have delay, feedback, 
and sync. And the combination with those three, of those three, uh, gets you uh, to a point where you can hear notes, random notes. Um, and uh, yeah, it would be nice to have a graph and see the comp filtering going on but uh yeah flanger is what uh, it's what it really is it's a comp filter and uh you can get notes so yeah that's where the notes come from that's from the comp filter over here then we have delay and the delay, the only thing that moves is over here. Uh, it's towards the end, this much and this much on the mix to bring in some uh, fast uh, 30 second notes uh, within this frequency uh, band. Right. OTT was not modulated. The last thing, the amp is not modulated in any of uh, the automation lanes. And uh, what you have after all this automation going through the amp, you get this. So it's a flat amp, gain at one, the matched cabinet, some fuzz, some uh, reverb. The reason I chose uh, some fuzz after the amp was, uh, if you can hear, There's a very sharp uh, ping going on and I don't like it. Yeah, the fuzz brings everything to the same, uh, same level, sort of. Then the reverb. Okay, okay. It does what it does. That's just one sound let's go back entirely oh there is one one more thing it's the eq it does some things it has a ramp mostly not sequenced in uh, a step form it starts with a sharp boost it sweeps around then the boost disappears and then it loops back again. As the whole circus going on, it's all about what you can do with uh, this very simple and available and free tool in every DAW. Um, it's funny how sometimes you find a plugin that's uh, advertised because you, you can uh, 
modulated in the same way you can have already mod modulated it outside of the plugin. Uh, it's easier, okay, for some people who are new to sound design, it's easier to have the things in the same place uh, you're messing around. Um, but the automation simply lets you uh, modulate anything you really want. Plugins, faders, panning, soloing, muting. That's what it does. And it's very simple. You have your automation and then you can do anything with the stock plugins you have. You don't need any third party plugin that uh, does crazy things. You can do crazy things with your stock plugins. It's, you know, it's kind of nice that you can turn this into this. Right, and then afterwards I put a kick. The kicks are from the Simplosive pack, which is a free pack you can get at um, Lutz Audio, and it's great. Uh, this is the sub kick. Oh, some things on the channel strip. So yeah, that's the stock sound. So out of the box is just that one sound, okay? Subby. Great sounding, but for the purpose of this one, um, I wanted uh, gritty and uh, grimy kind of kick. And uh, too much uh, the sound I just uh, showed you. The sequence of sounds in the automation lanes. And uh, yeah, again, distortion. Nothing much. Then it goes into the quadrophase where only this band is heavily saturated. All the other ones are zero, even though, even though they are at zero, they do something, but not as nearly as this one here and uh, yeah this band is from 1.5 to 10k last one on the chain sub With this one over here, uh, everything is contained and uh, all the saturation uh, behind it makes sense. It's kind of darker and that's the sound I prefer on this one. Then kick top, again it's a sample from the Simplosive pack without anything on it. Yeah, that's what I was looking for, uh, a clicky kind of sound. Then with OTT again, but without any excitement and without any low end, high end on 10 and some mid as well. I just wanted uh, the, click, the clickiness. I just wanted the clickiness of it. To round it up even more. Over here, these samples in the middle, uh, every eighth note, it's the same sample of the first channel I explained, uh, but uh, the samples are 11 dB quieter um, to create this kind of feel.
and towards the end here um, two sixteenths and an eighth again but it's the same sample together Cool. And then into vital, like this skin, I made it. It's a nice skin. I made it. I like it. Yeah, I continued the theme of comb filtering, the same theme on the first channel. Uh, that's the majority of the video. And um, yeah, again, comb filter, you bring partials that uh, when you sweep around you can get different kind of overtones that you didn't have you can tune things you can uh, add notes to things that uh, traditionally don't have any or you, they're not uh, conveyed through notes they're conveyed through their percussive aspect but um, as you saw we took a kick and turned it into something kind of melodic with one or two notes jumping in and out and that's the comb filter over here and if I sweep around the frequency band You can hear all these partials that create um, notes that you didn't have before. Cool, yeah, um, nothing special on the uh, remaining part of the synth. It's just a, uh, just a saw wave, pink noise, that grain only as a wavetable. Kind of works, I like it. And that's that. Yeah, even, uh, even the automation on the EQ with that steep uh, frequency boost and with uh, the low cut I did just now, you get different sounds. It's all sounds, it's all sounds, you can do anything you want. I had that too, but this voice too, but uh... create some dub some minimal some uh, minimal uh, minimal dub uh, minimal and dub and ASMR
the tutorial or whatever you want to call it and here no and with those four okay and it's great that you take such a mundane sound and create something like that it's very nice it's very nice it's cool I have other things coming up as well and it's more guitar more electronic blah 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 I'll see you in a month maybe if I don't get my right Great. I'll see you.